Welcome to another video by Meshton Educational Services using the TI Inspire and Python as a coding language. In this particular video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Python modules to visualize a dice simulation. So rolling of two dice or tossing off two coins, it would be a visual display. So I'm going to use the Python coding module. This is a code I have written on the TI Inspire and I'm using Python as my coding uh, language. I'm actually simulating the rolling of two dice and you're actually going to see the dice visually, the output. So I'm going to run the program before I start explaining the code. So if I do Control R to run the program, so I'll run it now. So Control R and you'll see I get a 5 and a 6 and uh, on my shell screen you can see dice a is 5 and dice b is 6 if i do control r again i'm running the program i get a 4 and a 4 and let's do it one last time control r and i get a 2 and a 3 so this was the simulation now i'm going to explain you the code so to start with what you're seeing is a notes page on the TI Inspire and on the notes page I have saved the images for the dice with number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I've done so for the head and tail for the coin as well which I'm going to show you later. So if I right click this or control menu I have to name the image and I've called this as 1D. Likewise this one here I've called it as 2D and the name of the image is important in the code this one here should be 6d so each one of these has got a name so you can import the images from any uh, software or from your computer onto the ti inspire now uh, i'll go to the coding page here so the first thing i've imported the random module uh, it's uh, one of the python modules and then i've got the ti draw a uh, import actually I don't need that I'm going to get rid of that and uh, I've got the TI image import that's the one that I'm using so the first thing I'm doing is that's dice 1 and I'm saying generate a random integer from 1 to 6 and store that value as M and then I'm actually converting this D1 I'm uh, storing a variable which is actually taking the value from the integer over here that I got so if the integer was 2 that would be 2 plus the string D so it's going to create 2D and that would be the image name 2D so what this one uh, is doing over here it is just creating the name of the image using the number I got on the dice and I'm doing exactly the same thing for the second dice I'm storing that as N and then I'm saying take the string N and add the letter D to it and if say on the second dice I got 4 then this would be 4D so this is going to pick up image 2D and this one is going to pick up image 4D so now this is the program here I'm saying load the image D1 uh, from here which was uh, stored over here as a variable and then I'm saying display the image show the image the x value is 5 and the y value is 5 and of course uh, it will take up the screen based on the size of the image but this is the x and the y coordinate from where my image would uh, be positioned and then I'm saying load the second image d2 and do exactly the same thing so I've moved this image to the right so the x value is 160 and the y value is 55 units down so I don't want them overlapping I'm just spreading them over the page so that's really the code and then when I click escape it takes me back to the shell page and the shell page will give me this output print the value on dice A and the value on dice B so that really was the code so all I am emphasizing on this line over here is actually storing the variable as the name of the image and this is the second image and uh, I'm getting these numbers randomly from 1 to 6 so that's dice 1 and that's dice 2 so let's run this again and I've got a 6 and a 3 so that would mean 6 and D would be the image name and 3 and D would be the image name here now I'm going to demonstrate uh, the head and tail and I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did for the dice so once again if I go back to the page here 
I had the head and uh, tail for the coin. So these are the two images. If I right click, it says the name is head and this one here the name is tail. And now if I go back to my program, I've got another one which obviously is several lines. It's got 21 lines, but I'm doing exactly the same thing here. And you'll see I'm doing it in 11 lines. In fact, it's not 11 lines. It is less because I don't need that one there. So it's really down to 10 lines, the code. So I'll explain the code or I'll run the program first and then I'll explain the code. So control R and I get a tail and a head the first time and the page displays tail and head. So if I do control R again, I get a tail and a tail and let one last time a tail and a head. So let's go back to the program here. It's a, doing exactly the same thing. So I've called a, a, a list or I defined a list CO with uh, items head and uh, tail. Now these are string values. That's why they go in quotation marks. So my string is called CO for coin and then uh, I'm using the random choice uh, module, so choice, and it would give me either a head or a tail. So I'm calling that, storing that variable as C1, and for the second coin, I'm storing that as C2. So C, uh, C1 could be a head, C2 could be a tail, or it could be a head again, so it could be anything. So I'm using the choice uh, option in the random module. Then I've imported the image module. And then all I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, load image C1 over here. And this time C1 is actually called the head. And that's the name of the image. So actually I don't have to do any other calculation here. So it's uh, loading the image head or the tail, whatever uh, C1 would be from here. And then I'm saying show the image at the position 5 and 5. So those are the X and Y coordinates. Then I'm doing exactly the same thing, load the image C2. Now C2 could again be a head or a tail depending what I got over here. And I'm saying load that at, uh, so load the image and then display the image at the X coordinate as 160 and Y coordinate as 55. So that's going to be the image uh, page and then when I click escape, it will take me back to the shell page and it will give me the head or the tail, whatever the coin was. So I'm going to run that. So coin A head, coin B tail, whatever it is, the display. So let's run it, control R. And first coin is a tail, the second is a tail. Then escape, it says tail and tail right at the bottom of my screen. If I run the program again, it's a tail and a head. So that's really the simulation. If I just take you back uh, to another page, I have used the if uh, option over here, but you'll see the program actually becomes much longer. I'll run the program for you, but uh, obviously what I've just shown you on this page, it's a much efficient way of running the same program. So let's go and run the program here, and I get the same result. So uh, if you want, I'll just scroll through the screen and you can pick up the code from here. So I'll just keep going down. And uh, I've used the if condition there. So else if, so that's for coin 1, this one here. And then this one here is for coin 2. So that's really it.